Okay, so why is it Hello, my name is Sexton Paulus and I'm a teacher here at Eros Primary. Um, I teach life skill from grade 4 to 7. Um, in terms of uh, teaching resources, teaching and learning resources that I'm using in our classroom, uh, I want to speak in my capacity as a life skill teacher. Um, for example, the textbook, um, they are not enough. Uh, what I do is I have less than 50 textbooks and um, I need to use this textbook for at least um, approximately 300 kids. Um, I want to say, for instance, the grade fours. We have um, six grade fours and I only have 50, less than 50 textbooks. That means I can only use the textbook in a class, but in case the learners need to go and do further reading on a topic, then it will not be possible because these textbooks are not enough. So um, this is also one of the things that we're struggling with. Um, uh, we are also um, thinking about maybe upgrading our classroom in order to, for us to have a project and a, a whiteboard so that we can be able to present the information on, on the whiteboard. That makes it easier for us because, as I, uh, because I also rotate with the classroom. So meaning I have to walk around and it also makes it a bit um, difficult for me when I have to carry the books from this class to this, that class and this class. So um, if we had a, um, a whiteboard and maybe a projector, it would be easy because you just have all the lesson plans, all the teaching aids in the, in the, in the laptop and then you just present it to the, to the learners in the class where there is a projector and a, a whiteboard. I think that will be effective and it will help us, you know, improve the quality of the education that we are presenting to the learners or that we are giving to the learners. Having a library or a resources center at our school, I think will help us very much or it will be a blessing because, um, as I said, we don't have enough resources such as textbook and if learners need to do, let me say, maybe an investigation or they need to do a project then they need information. Having a resources center will help very much in addressing the need of the uh, 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 textbook that we are falling short on. Um, and I think it will really, really go in a long way in helping our learners in doing their homework assignments and also the projects. Um, in terms of the teachers, I think it's also, uh, it will also help us very much because having a resources center, you, you have um, a source of information that you can always rely on when you need to prepare your lesson plan, when you need further information. Uh, because as a teacher, you also need to constantly update yourself with the lightest information and having a resource center that is even um, uh, provided with computers, it will be a blessing to us because we will have information on our fingertips and we will always uh, we will keep, we will be very updated and I'm sure that will improve our teaching um, experience and also uh, the learning experience of our learners. Uh, I'm Ms. Amanda Oivis, a teacher at Eros Primary School, um, English teacher, also currently the acting head of department for languages. I have been teaching at Eros Primary School for the past 12 years. Um, I would like to see more books. We do not have a lot of resources. Um, reading is of utmost importance currently in our country. I would love to see more reading books where our learners can be engaged in positive reading atmospheres. A library for teaching and learning. It's, it's, it's like a safe haven for learners. A library is a place where which has order and discipline and this can move over to our classrooms we will have more discipline in our classrooms because when you are in a library you know that you are supposed to follow rules or you are not supposed to partake there um uh, it's a lifelong learning when you are in a library you never stop learning because every place where you go in, in a library you can learn a thing or two hi my name is jacobina i'm grade seven learning Hi, my name is Lyon Clutter. I school at Eros Primary School. I'm grade 6. Hi, my name is Laika Amundi Mbongo. I'm 11 years old in grade 4 at Eros Primary School. I feel like everybody has 
the opportunity to um, go to the library, the local library in Munich, for research or projects and so on. So I feel like having a library in our school will actually benefit us in many ways. Like with one, once I had a, 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 a agriculture project and we had to do research from textbooks but then due to textbooks being few for the learners or textbooks not being provided for us I had to go to the library which my mom and dad didn't have the taxi money or fuel money to take me there so I did miss up uh, some points from that project so I feel like it affects let's say 50% of our academics due to Resource, loss of resources. When, if we we'll have a library at the school, it will be more positive and more safe. And it will even, it'll even create a bond between teachers and students. It will even create a fun effect of learning. And that will upgrade kids' mathematical, and the kids' mathematical views, scientific views, and social study views. And it will help the teachers bond speak to the kids anymore and do not have violence to this Okay, so if we had a library and a circle study tent, we would be able to go to the library like during the reading period. The teacher would tell every child take a book and we would maybe take the book home and at the end of the week we would come and maybe like present which chapter or which phrase we like most of the book and we come and present it to the class as a fun assignment and it's also helping As you all know that we are moving into the fourth industrial revolution where children have to make use of technology. So we are actually very much excited because of the curriculum that is speaking to the current situation, that of being industrialized and also serving the purpose of the new syllabus that was also introduced, meaning that the material that we are going to have is going to serve the proper purpose. Apart from that, the technical part, which is the IT part, the children will be able to make use of information via uh, WhatsApp, which is the phone, via the laptops, the computers, and meaning that they are also able, able to track to sources and information uh, through the new way of getting information, which is more exciting than just opening up a book 
And apart from that, um, getting a new library is actually going to boost us morally because you know, uh, as people say that African countries are not really uh, reading cultural based. So with our new library, we are also going to make sure that our children are morally boost so that they understand the need of reading and also knowing the purpose of a library. Apart from that, we have got children who are staying in vulnerable places where they are not even able to get information. So the library is going to serve for the purpose since they will be able to stay at school and complete their task. And they are going to do that enjoyably in a new environment. We don't have to worry about sending them home anymore because the library is going to cater for that purpose as well. So we are very, very excited. Uh, me, myself, as also a principal of the school, I'm also very excited to the fact that our teachers are going to make use of these resources as well because um, the library serves also as a purpose of information when they are also researching for some material that will also enhance the curriculum that they are teaching to the children and they are able to have first-hand information which is also current information which the children can relate to because uh, they say that when you have got uh, proper information and good technology then learning also becomes very interesting and also practical and children are able to learn by seeing and doing at the same time. standing here. Um, may the head of departments just uh, raise because I need a bit of energy. I just want the people to turn and just see that we are a team and you should actually give them applause because they look very smart. You may be seated. It's a privilege for us to receive you as visitors coming from different destinations. We are super blessed. Eros is love. And Eros, I, I can attest that when you enter these premises, you sense the love because we are very warm. And we choose to love and we say that we love our neighbors as we love ourselves and most importantly everything that we do we do from the heart so we teach from the heart and we are also grateful for our own government that's why you see there is that infrastructure there four blocks of classes amidst the fact that there is no money we are able to still receive from the little that we have. Can we clap hands for the Ministry of Education, the Director of Commerce? That is what strategic leaders do. Even when there is nothing, or they seem to have nothing, they try their level best. We normally run to the podium. So I feel this morning very much intimidated by so many young people. But I also must say it's very, very encouraging. It's saying something to us that are on the wrong side of age. Make way for the younger ones, perhaps. I take it that they have bright ideas, they have the right spirit, and they see also very far into the future. Their eyes are brighter than ours. 
That's why you see some of us are wearing spectacles. It's a sign of old age somewhere along the line. I am extremely happy, delighted to be here amongst you this morning. This is indeed not the very first time that I'm in the company of Footsteps for Africa. And I was just wondering, you know, very often you get people that comes back. And earlier in our discussion, I said to Austin, this should not be seen as an isolated event. It's actually a critical, crucial activity that is taking place this morning. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for having me. Uh, what a warm welcome, what a wonderful staff uh, this is, and what a wonderful event. Thank you. Uh, before I talk a little bit about Footsteps for Africa, I would like you to imagine a scenario with me in your mind. Imagine that in this moment you are taken away. You are taken to a courthouse and you are put before a judge. And the judge tells you what you are accused of. He says you are accused of helping your brothers and sisters when they needed your help the most. Would you be found guilty of such a charge? Has there been enough evidence in your life where the judge would find you guilty? For me, I, I believe that collecting evidence in our lives, doing the good deeds to be found guilty in this proverbial court of good deeds is the greatest goal we could ever achieve in our lives. Whether it is your neighbor or a school across the ocean, the impact is, is just as important. So why am I here in a school across the ocean? We all have our circles of influence. We all have a perspective in our community, with our families, with our friends of the needs uh, that are there. And we may recognize a need that another person may not. Your neighbor may have a need that I cannot understand or see. And in, within my circle of influence came Jordania and Dima in 2013. And after she joined my circle of influence, and she joined me in my mission to help uh, vulnerable and children and children uh, and enhance the education of children, we joined our circles together to accomplish many different educational uh, initiatives. And now our circle has expanded to Eros Primary. Thank you for the pronunciation. I'm so grateful to be a part of your circle of love. I love that motto, Eros is love. I love that definition because our library is truly bred from love. I'm grateful that it is supporting uh, the existing ICT initiatives that we have at your school and the directorate and the ministry as a whole, but this library is not bred from policy, it is bred from passion and from love. We really love you. We really, and to the learners, we really care about you. I see your staff really cares about you. There is a great spirit of love in this school and on this, in this event, and I'm so grateful to now be a part of this circle of love. We have so much love for you. We really want to see you succeed. In 2006, I, I came to uh, Namibia for the first time as a student researcher. I was studying the Himba in the north. And since that time, really Namibia hooked me. I just, I, I felt something special ab about this place. And as I saw the need um, to help uh, assist children um, in the north, I'm, I'm grateful that we, I have been able to come back frequently with Jordania and make a difference. And 
wow, I am, I am so impressed and so humbled to see the efforts that, that your principal and your, the leaders of your school are making to make a difference in your life. I think that the greatest example uh, of love that you can see is sacrifice. There is a tremendous amount of sacrifice uh, and investment in your lives. And so as, as you pursue your mission in this school, as you feel of that love, I would just continue to think of that perspective. As you try to make a difference in this world, would you be found guilty in the court of good deeds at the end of your life of loving your fellow man and fellow woman? Whether it is your neighbor again or whether it is the entire nation, the impact is the same. Look at your circle of influence. What can you do that no one else can do? What can you do in partnership with others? I'm so grateful to be a part now, partner now with Eros, a partner now with the director and the minister. Thank you so much.